uh, you're getting one less instance of damage from the defusal, right? So mm -hmm. technically, does it go up in damage? It's about the same, you know, and you're just burning less mana. And I think that's a good way of uh, of fixing this. Low skills bring in the uh, the banter. I don't know. I don't know if you call that banter or <laughs> some NA spice. Well, I think he's from another region. Yeah, he uh, he was playing on Western Europe last time. I'm not mistaken. Bringing in the international spice. They don't they don't put spice on their food over in Europe, man. Come on. <laughs> They don't know what America spices are. America doesn't put spice. America does not put spice on its food. <laughs> yes, but we at least have a lot of uh, cuisines like, options that you can get spiced. You know. Yeah, yeah at least from not America. Put, like, beans on toast. You know. <laughs> Was that intention? I will say thank you. Intention, but I recognize. Uh, where is he from? I'm trying to remember. Uh, okay, so he's from Hungary. He played on Into the Breach. Yeah, that's what I remember. Hi, TB. Um, so here's something that's a little bit interesting about this, this draft, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, red two, of course, like kind of falls back on comfort for his pango. I think it should be pretty good, but I feel like Templar assassin Sick now that with like the less instances of damage actually is much stronger into this matchup than previously that's because, true. you know, that's how refraction works. Yeah. So pango not nearly uh, as good a counter yeah i suppose um the part about pango where he's like just such a consistent laner that part's probably still the same because the yeah. the change to the the damage essentially means it's about the same uh, like i said a little better actually so i guess he'll still get through the laning stage most likely and the big question is like will his impact be the same after that and will we see a different build i don't know if he's come up with something crazy in the the one hour since it's been here i actually would have been perfectly okay with him making it so that swashbuckle just doesn't do as much damage like i don't know why they felt obligated to be like oh well we got to make it do more damage now in the late game and it's like but why <laughs> like you did did you though but why? did you need to make it do more damage <laughs> pango's had it too good for too long honestly so that is true we'll that is see. true if he if he got nerfed into the the abyss for a bit i think people wouldn't mind too much yeah maybe red well, two would he's grandmaster here yeah it's one of his one of his favorite heroes um but it's time to jump into the game finally as the pause ends it's gonna be shopify versus Gosh, I, 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 Apex, oh my, Apex Genesis, that's it, that's their name? God, what a, what a, what a name. Uh, I mean, it's better than some other names we've had, but, you know, that one will do. Ooh, late smoke for Shopify Rebellion. This should be, he hasn't skilled anything yet. We can still get a punch hook for the first blood attempt here. The wards are already out for apex genesis and uh their wards are on the top half though so they may not see this smoke and smoke's gonna pop rtz's just like blind hook there's it. someone here just do it blind there's hook. someone down here guys they I actually oh, don't know sidestep i don't think he saw yeah it. wait he's he gonna didn't... do it do it <sighs> they're they about actually it. just care more about getting this kill than is. actually getting their runes but they're no, not they're gonna wait for him to creep side. block they're gonna, yeah. yeah they're gonna wait for him to creep block and then they're gonna hook him He's like, oh, God. <laughs> Into the frostbite. Blood grenade to follow. Fade bolt. They're going to give this one on over to Arteezy's pudge. So first blood going to him. And your creep block not going to happen either. So they are very happy about that one. Your pudge starting the game with uh, a 1,000 net worth. Not bad. Yeah, that's very good because pudge is very much a tempo hero when he's played as carry. If he falls behind, it feels really bad. So you want your Pudge to have a very good start. And first blood against the enemy offlaner means his lane is already set up in a fantastic situation as well. So let's hope he can uh, keep landing those hooks throughout the games because he he's definitely in the position to carry. He also TP'd out here. So if you Kitrak gets a Frostbite here and they just hook under tower, that's what they're looking for. 
and suddenly your lane becomes really rough. So you have to focus on your positioning and play opposite the lane from the Crystal Maiden. Else, you know, you're basically just gonna feed to this combo. 50% on hook so far, but that's okay. That's still, that's probably enough to win if he lands the rest like that. And it's passing in the North American education system. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's uh, so true. Painfully so true. Unfortunately <laughs> true. If there's anything we like here, it's the reduction of standards. <laughs> uh, um, speaking of missing uh, 50%, uh, a lot of these lanes aren't... Uh, they're getting a lot of denies. Yeah, they really are... We're not seeing a lot of CS between the two lanes. It's uh, five denies in mid from the Templar, and... Pudge, of course, having the best time uh, of anyone right now, like doubling the CS of any other hero, which is kind of par for the course. Is this, you know, he comes to lane with 79 damage, uh, which is, you know, if you check your books real quick, that's a lot. It's a lot of damage. Some bottom, maybe? No. Oh. Okay, it looked like they maybe were thinking about going there, but. Uh, Pudge is a pretty low armor hero, so when you get hit, hit by, uh... Oh, very nice kill top lane. That was sick. I mean, it's... Honestly, I think Saberlight just kind of outplaying him a little bit. I don't know if he just, like, thought he was tankier than he was, but he just takes Fade Bolt into Avalanche, and that was enough. I actually thought this lane was going to go really rough for Saberlight, but after that, he's got to be feeling good, and they can contest the Lotus, so I don't know if Yamsun's going to be able to do anything about this. We'll have to see. They're playing a little ring around the Rosie. Good stuff. It's a little worrying for Naga to be off to a rough start, but, I mean, she is a hero who can recover really quickly, so as long as she starts getting some farm, she should be fine. Oh, nice bottom, go bottom. finally so. get the kill. Yep, I mean, already that's the hook. combo. Yeah, Frostbite. Yeah, he's already hook. used Hook. But this is a lot. He is very slow. Yeah, they're waiting on the, the Frostbite to come off cooldown there. And uh, he was just checking for the hard camp, if I believe there, if you're wondering. Just looking for the hard camp. Not Classic the board. carry doesn't know what his support's up to. That camp's blocked by your own support, sir. No, that was really good by them. Uh, just enough mana for Frostbite at the end, too. They were waiting for that. So, very nice start. I don't know. It's getting scary. Beastmaster's not a hero you want to fall far behind. I mean, you technically do have the, like, stacks to cover, to come back. He hasn't done any yet, but this is about the time he'd start making those stacks. Uh, but, I mean, for a tempo hero, like, you never want to fall behind like this. I mean, you're yeah. you're you're happy for Shopify. You're like, yeah, my tempo hero is doing great. Uh, but their hero... Oh, God. Apex Genesis gonna need to run, Hoodwink, out. run! Okay, she uh, simply sidestepped the hook. They were just a little bit too far apart there for the for the combo. Wait, Hoodwink is squishy, man. Yeah, you get hooked, is... you're dead. Although she does have a Lotus, she has a Lotus and two blood grenades actually. So a little That's tankier amazing. than usual right there. Dude, I feel like Crystal Maiden is just waiting to get sights on the Hoodwink to just set up a Frostbite. But the thing is, is the lane is still playing itself for the Pudge. He's not under any pressure, like, to stop CSing, right? Like, he is top of the net worth, or top of the CS and top of the net worth by a pretty significant margin. And anytime they want to go aggressive, they absolutely can. So we're going to see the Frostbite come out onto the Beastmaster. They're just going to hold Hook here for a while. Bushwhack does not connect and fade. Honestly, tries to summon the boar. He's trying to finish a kill here on the kid track, but there's going to be a second I, uh, frostbite into the hook now on to blink. And Hoodwink will give up two kills to the pudge. He does manage to finish off of the crystal maiden, but four flesh heaps, four kills. This is not how you want to play into the pudge lane. In mid lane, they're going to go ahead and dive red two here, and they should be able to get the kill as they do. Uh, meld plus blightstone, very good. Dyer's middle right, you saw it here first, guys. Pango, not good hero anymore. You can stop picking it, thank you. Please, yeah. 
Uh, he's gonna get his arcane boot still. I mean, this this part of the build still what we thought would be about the same. And laning wise, up till that moment, it was going pretty even. BNC. He's not having close. a great time. He's, he's trying to help out in different places. Just getting killed everywhere almost. I'm a little bit surprised by Arteezy's build. He is going to go for the Veil of Discord, which it is a very good item on Pudge, but I guess when you don't have an offlaner that wants to build Veil, uh, it ends up being uh, much more valuable. Mid lane, again, another dive here on Tourette 2. He's going to be able to get out at the moment as the boar will slow things up. I would love to see them steal these stacks, actually, because TA is one of the best heroes for this kind of thing. And they this is already the only know. Recovery for Beastmaster yeah, too. you know, Beastmaster has no game besides doing these Radiant stacks. Oscar. Look at Arteezy. He's playing so aggressive over here. He, he knows what six. Fade wants to do. He's like, he you, actually you're just trying to farm him. stacks. Like, Dice Fade can't get away. Yeah, you just, you yeah. just go for the dismember play. Meanwhile, at the rune, like, they're just taking the wisdom as well as Thelacor and Kitrax secure them both. So. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, I mean, I've played a lot of Pudge in my life, I'll be honest, and this is the dream Pudge game, and Blink here, gonna give up a Frostbite, had to dodge the hook, he's still not getting away. Trying to give the kill over to Arteezy, and they do. Down to 100 HP as the Pango's gonna TP in, Swashbuckle does not connect. So he's gonna commit that Rolling Thunder and try and finish off the level 5, almost level 6, mind you, Crystal Maiden, but hold on, Kitrak, the Breaker of Ankles, trying to deny the, the neutrals, won't, won't get it though. Uh, Arteezy is gonna die, but he gets the deny. Oh wow. my goodness. Yeah, maybe a little bit too much aggression here, but the fact that he denies himself, oh, that feels bad. He would have been worth so much money for Apex Genesis. He's at 4.6 net worth at eight minutes. They also took mid tower in that, in that timing. Like Yopaj was able to just finish up the tower. And top tower's taking a beating too. So you are quickly losing your map, and it definitely looks like you don't have the strength to fight the heroes. So what is the play from there? I mean, they were making stacks as their recovery, but Yopaj is just taking them, and they're looking for red two now. They they know his Rolling Thunder's on cooldown, and Yopaj should have no problem finishing the job. Well played there. By the look for a good bait in bottom lane. A very nice pickup on the fade, and Pudge still has the dismember, walks in, grabs himself his seventh kill of the game. Yeah, this Pudge has your more is super high level. Pudge has more flesh heap stacks than some supports have lasted right now. That's not good. It's it's very bad for Apex oh. Genesis. Yeah, uh, I really like that he changed his build. I, I was going to be a little... I, with how good the game is going, I think a lot of times you can honestly just go straight for the Aghanim Scepter if you're this far ahead. I think Veil is like kind of a, a medium item of like, all right, I, my lane is going okay, but I need the sustain from Veil. Uh, I think this is one of those games. It's like, if you're playing Carry Pudge, be greedy, get to your Aghanim Scepter, and then play for your item after that. Yeah, I think, like you mentioned, it's... It's something you can adjust because you're so far ahead. I think if it's a closer game, you want that extra damage from the, the Veil active to help you pick up these kills. But when you've actually just been killing people the whole time and you're now massively ahead, you don't really need that anymore. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm glad to see the Ags rush too. Though I, I kind of want him to go back for it later because I do think Veil slash Shiva's is pretty good versus Naga. Agreed. Running through the trees here, trying to find Red 2 on the Pangolier. They do manage to get him for a moment. Shield Crash will be stolen. Still looking to finish him off with the Swashbuckle away. He These are just the supports fine. that are bullying him out. Yeah. They just keep finding stacks in the enemy jungle because that's all Yamsun's been able to do on this uh, Shadow Demon. He, like They have no other lane that they can play in, so he's just been constantly stacking. And they're just kind of getting stolen, so they have to take them uh, or give them away to Shopify because... Yopaj already took the triangle ancient stack. Yeah, I feel like this Pudge pick from Shopify was so sick, and then the first blood they got with it too. Yeah, it's just still dead, dead actually. Yeah, there's just nothing oh, you can do. Man. We have Blink Dagger finished yeah, up on Yopaj awesome. as opposed to going for 
a like Dragon Lance or a Deso. I love this. Just playing aggressive with the supports. And Delacor happens to have a level two bushwhack stolen. So the cast range on this is enormous. There's that 10 extra meld damage coming into play right there. You are 8,000 ahead at 11 minutes. This game is not going to be getting good for uh, the Dire anytime soon. Saberlight nearly uh, closing in on his Blink Dagger as well. Dyer's top tower has fallen. I feel like Saberlight and, and Naga have been playing their own game up here. Yeah. Low skill, just trying to like farm the jungle. Tiny just slowly, slowly taking the tower. Everyone else is just running around killing or being killed. He's almost at his blink though, so I mean he's gonna start joining the action soon enough. Maybe right now. Stun oh, BNC. BNC. Tree toss. I don't he's think gonna get away. Him, so. Yeah, he needed oh. one more attack. Is he but getting actually, away? Because he's walking right into a yo pause, and that no. meld strike is a lot of damage. Low skill doesn't have any points in the ult quite yet. Freezing field, not gonna save you with that mirror image, and Kid Track will claim another. 17 to 2 at the 12 minute mark as Arteezy is 130 gold from an Aghanim Scepter. Radiance bottom tower is under 12 attack. and a half minute Aghanim Scepter. That is scary. Now, I do want to highlight here Pudge has maxed Flesh Sheep. This is very important if you're going to rush in Aghanims. You need this or you will destroy yourself trying to use the Aghanims. So in your pubs, do not max hook and then rush ags. You gotta get flesh heap. Are you sure? It's pretty funny when you like press, you know, rot with uh, Aghanim Scepter and you lose like 150 health a second. <laughs> you will actually do the most damage to yourself <laughs> if mm -hmm. you don't have the flesh heap. Yeah. Level four flesh heap will block even Aghanim Scepter's increased rot damage. So, uh, yeah, you'll, he'll take no damage while that Flesh Sheep is active. Has that 8 second duration, 17 second cooldown. It's it's very nice. For those of you that don't know, it's because Flesh or Rot is... Uh, I think it's 0.2 instances. So you're actually blocking lots of little instances. Oh my goodness, BNC. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Uh, blink reveal here from Saberlight. Goes for the toss to, uh, to the Pudge. Unfortunately, does not connect bait. Has to go for the roar to not die here. Uh, but I don't know if you're getting now. There is another toss in a moment, another avalanche in a moment, but they've got the vision and Fade will end up getting ran down here. Monster kill for the Pudge. And Kitrak, he's set up here to take the Wisdom Rune again. He's, he's kind of daring anyone to challenge him as his team is barreling down the lane. To, to close the gap. He's not even hiding there. He's literally chasing people away. They're bringing everyone, but you got to be very careful. Avalanche toss. Yeah, Sun's already dead. Low skill nearly dies um, uh, as well. Four points wild axe is stolen here for Telecore. They're trying to just finish off the Crystal Maiden, but she's still alive. Gets the freezing field. Finally dropped on Yopaz on the backside. Just cleaning him up as a sharpshooter comes through. Snipes down an extra hero. Red 2 trying to finish off the Templar Assassin. He gets the Refraction. He should have a Blink to safety as well. And does he decide? Ooh, nice. Fade does have Dust, but there is a trap here to slow him up. And guess what? Saberlight's back, baby. The tiny Avalanche. Another toss in a moment, but won't be able to do it. So he'll get it. He'll get out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's just a, that's a saving just Red Two's life. He's got his defusal now, which is strictly worse than it was last patch. Uh, along with the fact he is 14k behind. Not sure if this Pango is going to be able to do what we usually see Pangos do. I mean, is there a turning point? Yes. Outside of the enemy fountain? No. Delacor bottom lane gets picked off. Nice grab there from Red 2. Also happens to have the Lance of Pursuit, so a little bit of extra bonus damage there. 
Uh, BNC walks up here, finds TA. Great blink dodge for the moment, but really good bush or uh, sharpshooter up to the high ground. So we'll dodge out the death there. My man, that Rubik kill was 900 gold. Yeah, this, I mean, that's this is a not dire that surprising. state of affairs. This is a dire state of affairs. Saberlight finds low skill as well. Okay, this time he's got song. Hudge already got him though. He was waiting on the yeah, he was waiting out the song the whole time. Gets the hook. In comes Kid Track, the freezing field once again on the money as they will finish him off. And other side of the map, they do get a uh, solo pickoff onto the Shadow Demon. So it, it's just Shopify is playing so fast around the map. Looks like Pudge did go back for the Veil. Actually going to go back for a Soul Ring as well. Just... Ooh! Jesus. Well, they tried to cancel Pudge's TP. Uh, Yo, Pudge, however, like three shots the Pango. So, uh, literally, three shots. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, four shots. My bad. 1,300 physical damage. Very nice. As he is going to go for the, for the Deso. He's got the Dragon Lance. He's like, I don't need BKB. I don't need Forest Staff. I don't need Hurricane Pike. I want Deso. I want to hit heroes and hit them hard. And uh, I don't blame him. They are so far ahead. I don't really feel like they are under too much threat. Top lane. Saberlight's got his sights set here on another kill. Potentially. No, he's just going to clear out the wave instead. That's the Helm of the Dominator Creep. You know what I mean? You're watching this Pudge pick up Flesh Heap stacks. And you're like, man, I want to pick up stacks every time I kill someone. Gotta get the Deso. Okay. Also, I mean, it'll just help him take build. buildings faster, right? Do you see this? Do you see what he has to do? Whisper the Dread into a Dagon. Dude, hard I counter to, to the Helm of the Dominator. Oh, Saberlight finds BNC here. He goes for another jump away through the trees. Frostbite, though, plus the vision from this Crystal Maiden is just too much. The toss comes in as well as they will get the kill. So what were you wondering? Uh, Just like if he was actually going to go for the Dagon, but he does. He wants the 15% spell lifesteal. And it is, I mean, it is pretty... Pretty sick on a Pudge. I'll be honest. He also has the Rot Slow Talon. He'll probably pick the extra spell life still up at 15. He's like, someone let me get a hook here. But no, they're blocking him off. He'll pop the drums though. Speed the Pudge on over. Trying to get to Fade Arteezy. He's like, I got a Dagon, guys. He's mine. <laughs> oh, he didn't get his... Oh, no, he did get the Flesh Heap. Yeah, you get kill. Yeah, Flesh Heap kills always grant the Flesh Heap. I think that's the true reason he built the Dagon. I think we just saw it there. Memes aside, it, it's kind of good on Pudge because of how much magic damage you do. So I think the spell life still is quite nice, or I should say, spell damage you do. Next um, big brain. I have another big brain take here. When you're ready. Okay. Okay. Yeah. One shots helm of the dominator. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hard counter, dude. That's just pick off after pick off. It feels like. Okay, it's more meme if. He starts leveling up the Dagon. Absolutely. I don't think you need more than one level. Bottom tower is under attack. I think at this point, like, he doesn't even have to consider Dyer's another item. I mean, realistically, it would be Blink or BKB. But they are so far ahead, I have to wonder if he even needs to get there. Red 2 in the bottom lane gets kind of baited for the moment. Telekinesis, but nice Blink out there from the other core. Saberlight. He's in deep. Red 2 has Rolling Thunder available, but they're just kind of holding him here, preventing them from get back to their bases. The Song of the Sirens is going to come through from Losco. They're pinging out Yopaj, who has an Amplify damage rune. Gets rooted up. Earth. A lot of damage. Jumped on top of him, and he's dead. But now it's time for Arteezy to get to work. A double kill on the backside, taking down the carry Naga Siren. Is, they're also going to get Pango on the front side. Kitrax survives the burst. So a three for one, you're gonna get the tier four or the tier three towers, and I don't know how long these tier four, uh, this lane of barracks is gonna last. Also, do you see Crystal Maiden right now? What? What is this? This is what is with Crystal Maiden? This is uh, this is the future. This was yeah, supposed to be in the patch. This is supposed to be in the patch, but they didn't finish it, so they uh, it slipped in. They didn't mean for this to be in there. 
This is the new Persona skin. I see. You're just walk. You're just a, a little patch of snow yeah, on the ground. It's kind of like a snow shell. He's like an ice tortoise now. I see. I see. I'm about it. It's gonna be the new shard. Has been killed. It's kind of like Drow's glacier, but for Crystal Maiden, she just turns into a but ball. But you're of snow. the glacier. Yeah. Yeah, you're the and glacier. And people stand yeah. on you. Like really role playing as a support. Yeah, it's like really lifting your carries <laughs> <laughs> up in the game. Uh, I like it. Okay, RTZ is queuing up. Okay, he he had the level five Dagon queue, and he is going back for a Kaya Sanj. Uh, Which I mean, Crystal it's such Maiden a sick item for. Sets up a kill here for the Hoodwink. Oh god. It's not looking good, I'll be honest. One lane of barracks down, looking for the tier two top. 21,000 gold advantage as Tiny just walks in, finds the whole enemy team. He might give up his life here. He's taking a beating from these Nagas Iron Illusions. His red two trying to close the gap and get on top of him with that uh, Bushwhack. He connects. Still ends up giving his life in the process, and RTZ and Yopaj will clean up the rest. Three, or I guess two more kills going their way. And all of these things, I mean, it's just flesh heap after flesh heap for this pudge. I'll be creeping while you are sick. How many Dagon recipes? Oh no, right, you said he switched to Kaya Sanj. It could have been the Dagon 5 on the way right now. It could have been. A little bit disappointing. He deprived but... the people of this. I guess, I, I mean, Kaya Sanj with a Whisper of the Dread on pudge is kind of cracked, I'll be honest. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Because how much spell amp? 22%? Yeah, that's pretty good. I wish Rot like displayed its damage correctly. It's kind of annoying, but oh well. Uh, does he make it out? Yeah, he's out. Dude, Beastmaster is just getting poked down, trap after trap. The shard from Yopaj giving the silence is pretty substantial. Heal the core stole in Snare as well. More easy setup for the hooks. I like it. I actually can't believe in Snare is so short range on a Rubik. I thought it would be further. And it's only base is 500 cast range, so... He just went 740 for him with no other cast range item. I don't know. I guess it just seems further. I guess as soon as Naga starts it. Oh, oh. A little bit of a okay. miscommunication there, but it doesn't really matter. Honest, all that it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't all matter. They just get the toss back. Pudge going to take a lot of damage actually here from the Pango. The Guardian Cube's giving a little bit of sustain, but can he actually get away? The freezing field does get canceled. The hook connects onto the hoodwink. The swash from red two finally bring down the abomination. That we'll is not back the hero three he was aiming heroes for. To get back into this game, but can you actually bring down these big boys? They get Yopaj. Tiny's the next one. They got Kit Track as well. A massive hold here, honestly. If they can get more, it's still such a costly series of buybacks, and I don't even think they have to stop. Delacord with four points wild axes is just gonna kill them. The trap takes down the Shadow Demon. <laughs> Pudge just buys back. He's like, I'm fine. Link up to the high ground. Saberlight, he goes. Hits the Avalanche. Another toss. Hoodwink with a buyback. Trying to finish off Red 2. Feel the cord. Does he find him? He blinks up super aggressively. Still sharpshooter. Oh my god. <laughs> Thelacor, calm down. How many, is that the eighth buyback? What game are we playing? Saberlight going for the deny. Doesn't get it, but manages to take down the Beastmaster with him. And Pudge is back. He has walked all the way across the map. All right, that was five buybacks for Apex Genesis. They still gained, I think, 4,000 gold. And I don't know, do you feel good about that? I think you just uh, I mean, get what you can, but oh man, that it is a bad state of affairs. So you can buy back that many heroes and still make money, and you're still twenty five thousand gold behind is the downside. Um, I it's one of those things where yes, they finally got the pudge. Congratulations, big accomplishment. But you did that off the back of several buybacks, and you don't get that. 
you know, privilege again. I also want to point out that Rubik is the third highest net worth in the game. Yeah, I think they should work on getting Crystal Maiden up here. Alright, one Yo, more set. Song set up, see what they can bullet. do. Oh, Ooh. okay, he did just not use time hook. Yeah, and because of that, they get themselves a really nice kill onto Yopaj and Pudge. Underneath the tower here, he's tanky. He's already popped the flesh. He needs to be very careful. Sharpshooter comes through. Hook off the mark again. Disruption actually could do a lot of extra damage to the Beastmasters. They're setting their targets up on another hero. The Lotus is going to protect them for the moment. They're looking for low skill on the side. Saberlight fishing as well. Won't find a target. Maybe backing away here. Being a little overconfident here on Shopify, but... You still have to be very careful on the side of Apex Genesis because any setup is probably death. And Pudge is full HP again, so, you know, there's that. Is he going for Bloodstone to increase rot size? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Nice. Actually, just your whole screen being rotted. It's also just a ton of spell life steal, and, like, why not? Why not just get more? Amp it all up with the Assange components, too. His dismember heals like 3,000 HP, by the way. Oh, yeah, Tormentors. This game feels, uh. <laughs> does not feel like it's a 27 minute game. I totally forgot about the Tormentors. Well. I, I guess props to Apex Genesis for not giving up quite yet, as they are just trying to play this one out. Of course, this is their upper bracket life's on the line. This is their first time ever playing against Shopify as this, on this team, right? So you don't want to just tap out. You want to give it your best. And at some point, I have to imagine Shopify will buy BKBs, and then you know, then the game becomes very difficult. But for now, they have uh, been able to play the game without them. I don't think they're going to. I think they're just Penguin gonna end. Have a... Yeah, Penguin has a nice uh, Aghanim Scepter done. You need a, a roar into something. They get a song out from low skill. There's the Rolling Thunder. Dude, what a. Dude, the trap silence on the TA just actually prevents the Rolling Thunder from connecting initially, but they managed to isolate Yopa as the Rolling Thunder isn't enough to bring him down, and it is. But you've gotta worry about the punch, baby. He's got himself one kill to take on for the second in red two. Not looking like he's gonna get away from this big bad monster. A really nice hook as well. Saberlight finishes off Yamsung on the backside. Four heroes dead. And they will get back to work on these lanes of barracks. And finally, the GG comes out. Game one going to Shopify. Really strong performance from Shopify. I think it goes back to just winning every lane. We talked about it uh, in a previous game where Nouns stomped someone, I can't even remember now who, but when you're playing against these teams like Shop, 